Hey guys, welcome to the video. My name is Dean Samid, I'm a pro horror artist from the UK and you're tuned in to photomanipulation.com. In this tutorial I'll be showing you three hacks for working with and compositing hair in Photoshop. If you're new here, welcome. We're not your typical Photoshop channel, we specialise in photo manipulation, digital art and advanced Photoshop techniques. If that sounds like your kind of thing, be sure to like and subscribe as we put out five uploads a week. Let's roll the video, enjoy. So cutting out hair can be quite tricky in Photoshop uh, for beginners, intermediate and even advanced users. So I'm going to show you some of my favourite hacks today for dealing with different types of hair. So the demo piece that we have here is from our historical and fantasy bundle. This is Sahara Gypsy Witch and what we'd like to do is remove this figure from the background and have the hair fully composited even with all of the small strands intact so that's what I'm going to show you right now um, before we kick into things I'm going to show you the basics of how I composite hair it's just one method of many and then the hacks that I'll be showing you will be based on that initial process so first off Let's start with the original. So this is the original stock image in this document. And the first process for removing the entire figure, um, what I do is I create a dedicated mask layer. So this figure, all the solid areas were traced with the pen tool and then filled with white. And then the gaps were removed with the pen tool, drawing around the gaps and then right clicking on the closed path and go and make selection and delete. So that's quite simple, um, um, I, I call that a mask layer where there's at any time you can command and click on that or control and click on a windows and that creates a selection. The next stage is to create a mask based on the hair. So you're not going to get every single small strand or detail, it's pretty much impossible. Um, so what you want to do is just trace the larger thicker dark areas as you can see um, from the demo piece that was done previously um, i'm just going to show you that in action really quick i'm going to create a new layer shift command and n is the shortcut for that control shift and n if you're on a windows and then with the lasso freehand lasso you just draw around it doesn't have to be really precise and then to add, you hold down shift and add more. And to subtract, you hold down alt and you can remove. And you go all the way around, get all the details, alt and delete, and that will fill with the foreground color. Hit D to change the color palette to black and white. Hit X to switch it. I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna step backwards using alt, command and Z. Alt Control and Z on the PC and then I'm going to fill Alt and Delete and that will fill that with white and that was the process that was used to create this hair mask okay so with these two mask layers in place what I'm going to do is I'm going to command and click on the hair mask and that creates a selection based on that um, white fill layer that was created and then click on the original. I'm gonna hide that demo so it doesn't get in the way. And then with that original selected, I'm gonna get rid of these small gaps here. We go up here, refine edge, and then click that. Okay, you push the radius across a small touch. And normally in 9.5 times out of 10 I'm only ever using this radius slider you can use the other sliders shift edge and things like that but I tend to only use a radius and then work with the hair um, as you can see there's very heavy white fringe in here so I'm just gonna go okay and that's created that selection now from before the body mask that was created I want to add this refine edge selection to the body mask 
So shift command and click that body mask. And that will create a selection based on that mask layer. And then with both those selections active and the stock image layer active, go command and J and that creates a copy of that selection. And there we go. So that's step one. We've composited the hair using the refine edge technique. Now on with the hacks. Hack number one. You'll notice we have a uh, very heavy white fringing around the hair and the darker you go, the more obvious it becomes. So if this was on a dark or a black background, you can see it's very noticeable, doesn't look real, it's not the result that we'd like. So I've got a dark background there. Hack number one is you can sample the hair details because, well, first thing I'm gonna show you is a new layer above. And I'm gonna hold down Alt and click between that new layer and the base layer and that creates a clipping mask. Anything that I do within that clipping mask will only apply to the layer below. Now you could take um, a brush and a color, so a dark tone. I'm gonna sample a dark tone here and go like that. But what this does is it only creates a solid color and it's not that realistic. So I'm gonna undo that and instead we're going to use the clone stamp tool. Now I'm gonna make the brush about that big and I'm gonna hold down Alt and I'm gonna click on the hair. And with that sample active, I'm going to go around and get this white fringe in. And because the sample is coming from hair details, what's being filled in on the white fringing is just more hair. So it looks a lot more realistic than being filled with a solid color. So it's not going to take me long. Just going to zip around here just to demonstrate to you. And you'll notice that I'm intermittently holding down alt and sampling because I don't want to use these dark tones here when the hair gets lighter so I'm kind of following the fringing around using samples from hair that's in close proximity to it so here we go we'll get this finished off won't take too long just gonna glide around now it's not gonna look a hundred percent but it's is especially on a lighter background it's gonna look fantastic so we'll go around we'll finish this make sure all that fringing is filled in and then for hack number two I'm gonna show you a technique for taking this even further it's easier with models with dark hair so this bit here I haven't got something close to samples so I'm gonna have to go up a bit and just go like that. It's not perfect, but hack number two will take us to the next level. So there we have it. I've noticed a bit here to the left. I'm gonna get that. Okay, so that's hack one, is using the clone stamp tool to sample. Now with a lighter background, you can see that that looks great already. It's really nice, but there's a step further that we can do. So we have the clipping mask layer works over on the fringing and then what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate the original because this is very dark hair on a very light background we can change that so we created a, a duplicate command J to duplicate that and this duplicate layer we're going to change that to multiply now you'll notice that it's darkening everything else so we just need to do a very quick adjustment directly to the layer normally we don't work destructively like this but for the purpose of this we're just going to go command and l to bring up levels and then we're going to pull the white slider over and you can see that the darkness of the background is being knocked out and it's only leaving the dark hair if i click ok on that now i don't want that to be active everywhere as you can see, we've got the shoes and shadow down there. What we want to do is create a layer mask on that. Grab a marquee, bring that round there. We only want the hair. Shift command and I to select inverse. 
and then fill that with black. So the foreground color is already black. I'm just gonna go Alt and Delete, and then that only creates. So what this does is it grabs all the small strands, and that is looking pretty decent. So it looks good on the lighter background, on the darker background, still looks pretty solid. We have a small white area there, that's a very easy fix. But that's the basic principle of hack number two. Right, for the third hack. Now, not every model has dark hair. Um, not every background is uh, light. So we're gonna have a look at the, the third hack now. And for this one, we've gone through the same process for compositing uh, this Pippa Medieval Warrior is on the same stock bundle, the historical and fantasy stock bundle. We have the solid mask there for the solid areas. And we have the, let's have a look. There should be one there. Okay, it's not actually active on this file. But the same principle as before, freehand lasso round the hair and then refine edge. But if you compare this to the original, the refine edge process hasn't kept lots of these details. So for this third and final hack, what I'm gonna show you is that you can use brushes. Now the brushes that I've used, um, that I'm using for this hack are from DeviantArt. Now I'm gonna link you to the gallery because there's so many different types. They're all free by the way. You won't have to pay anything. Um, different models, different hair types, but I've got a couple here that I tested out earlier on. So I've got this one with the strands. I'm gonna hide and show the background for reference. Now this isn't, I very rarely use this technique, but I have done from time to time where too many strands were lost. So I'm gonna hold down Alt and I'm gonna click um, a region of the hair. I'm going to create a new layer, I'm going to Shift, Command and N. And then I don't need it to be near the model. I'm just gonna click it there to see how it looks. And then with those strands in place, Command T, flip horizontal and I can start bringing in some of those strands to match so I'm just going to duplicate that one command J and then turn it round twist it round at any point I could hit command and L and tweak the the brightness or the levels of that so I'm going to have a bit of variation in the tone for these strands here turn on the reference stock so we've got some curly wispy bright elements, bright hairs up at the top left. Let's have a look at this. That looks possibly okay. Okay, let's give that one a go. Okay, so I'm gonna change the foreground color. I'm gonna start with a sample there and I'm gonna bump it up just a notch. Maybe a bit more yellow in that. Okay. Again, I'm gonna create a new layer, Shift, Command and N. Okay, I'm gonna just click that there, so I've got it in place. And then free transform, command and T. And I'm gonna bring that up, get it in position. Hide that, look at the reference. So we've got some wispies there. And if needs be, if it's, if it's too bright, I can always take the opacity down and then just give the the, the faint impression of the hair strands. It's not my favorite technique in the world, but it can be very, very useful. I'll just do one more bit now. Have we got any small darker elements up here? So I'm gonna get it onto brush. I'm gonna sample that. I'm gonna use this, this brush again, create a new layer. Okay, let's tweak that. Let's see how that looks. So hide that, show the reference layer. And there you have it. The third hack for adding in strands that may have been lost when you're working with a model with blonde or mousy blonde, strawberry blonde, lighter hair. So that's it for the tutorial guys. I hope you enjoyed that one. We're a brand new channel. If you could like and subscribe, it would really support us in these early days and help us get the gears moving on the channel. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'll see you at the next video. Catch you then.